Hey, Davar, did you catch the game last night? The game? Well, what game? The game of Oofball, of course, because boys like Oofball, like boys do. And yeah, boys. and the hoof crane card, and hoof figurines. Hey, I, 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 I own the figurines, we want to exchange the figurines for cooler figurines. Hey, Hoofball, hoof boys! Hoofball figurines, Hoofball, Hoofballs. Sports, guys, boys, bros, hooray. You'll be honest, what's the Scanians? Uh, no, wait, that's different. <laughs> anyway, Spike likes Oofball. Hooray for that o already overused joke. <laughs> oh, in this case, Spike loves pancakes more than Oofball. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Twilight is pancake. Has been confirmed. Yes. Hashtag Twilight is pancake. Yes, Twilight's so in love with that pancake, she's making out of it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <clears throat> welcome to the family friendly pony podcast. <laughs> I that's, like how you say that. That's the. <laughs> we have to emphasize that it's family friendly and it's a pony podcast. Yes. All right? <laughs> family friendly pony podcast. Two words you wouldn't find too often in one sentence. <laughs> so, I am your princess host, Mad Dog Day Master, and this is my squire, Davar. <laughs> um, is, um, is just, um is not a princess, he's just a regular friend. Yes, I just dress up as a princess on Tuesdays. Really? I have Wednesdays. But anyway, <laughs> we're discussing the episode Castle Sweet Castle. What, what, what did we think about it? Davar? I thought it was a really lovely episode in places. I, you know, I, I really liked it. Uh, it was quite good, though I did have some... Uh, well, one particular, uh, let's see what the word is I said to you just a few minutes ago before Reser we started. You have, uh, Reservations. Have reservation. Let me guess. Rarity started leading Spike on again. Uh, no, that's, that didn't bother me. <laughs> uh, that bothered me quite a bit because she's been doing that for quite a while, especially in yeah. Season 4. That's a bit, uh... Um, ungenerous of her, I'd like to say, but that would be such a big old snap, I wouldn't even, you know, have the guts to put it up, because, you know, yeah. Rarity is Rarity's best pony. <laughs> well, 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 also Pinkie Pie's best pony. Well, well Fluttershy's best pony. Yes, also Rainbow Dash is best pony. Uh, everyone is best pony, basically. Yeah. We are, po no, all no, ponies no, are best ponies, okay? <laughs> all, po all ponies are best ponies, which means no pony is best pony. Everybody is equal. Nobody is more or less important than the other. Equality, praise be, equality for everyone. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which, is not, which is not the same as communism. Okay, yes, or, guys? Yes, and it's more of a cult thing. Yes, it's a cult, it's a cult mentality, and uh, which often translates into totalitarian regimes. Because what's a totalitarian regime if not a cult mentality that gained political power? But anyway, we're not talking about that episode. We've already said our piece on separately on those points. <laughs> yes, but I don't think there will be much to talk about this episode and the fact that it was good and it was basically a funeral episode. That's true. <laughs> But aren't you going to ask me what I mean by funeral episode? That's the bit we rehearsed. Remember? Oh yes. Uh, okay, let me. Okay, I gotta go back to character. <clears throat> Why, Mad Hog? Do you consider it a funeral episode? Well, I'm so glad you asked ask me that question so spontaneously, <laughs> <laughs> not completely rehearsed at all. <laughs> anyway, if I must say, is that. Well, look at look at what's the episode's theme here at, at play. It's about the grievance and the acceptance of the change that has occurred in the show. We look back at the memories we had with the show so far for four seasons before the big uh, status quo change in season four. And now at the beginning of season five, we have the episode that celebrates all of those memories but at the same time looks up at the future and the idea that we'll have new memories to have for our own. The adventures continues, life goes on. We have grieved about it, we have accepted the change, and now we get to live the rest of our life with what the show has to offer, which is cleverly uh, represented with Twilight Sparkle's own conflict that she still can quite call herself, well, can quite call her new fancy castle a home, this daunting, empty always over house, 
and cannot quite forget her old home in which all her memories are stored in. Uh, uh, quite literally, as it turns out. <laughs> we'll get to that. So, again, this episode is about grievance and acceptance. And therefore, it's a funeral. It's like a funeral. It's a metaphorical funeral. And funerals are about celebrating, mourning and celebrating at the same time what was past. But at the same time, you had, after all the grieving, after all the mourning, you had to look you have to the rest of your life to look up to you have the idea you have new memories you can form with your friends that are still with you life goes on and the show goes on and that's a really that's a really mature uh, thing to acknowledge for the creators of this show i like the idea that this show is growing the show has grown has become more mature the, the feel that we have from, from the show that, he, that it is now is quite different from what it used to be up until last season. The show has grown, the original audience has grown, the adult fan base, well, that's not grown at all, but uh, <laughs> everything else has grown. So that's what the episode is all about. Everything has it's grown a, from small beginnings. <laughs> yes. But this is at the heart of it all. This is what this episode is all about. Celebrating the accomplishments of the season, of, of the show so far, of all its seasons and the story and what the characters have done and grown, but also acknowledging that all of that is in the past and it's now time to look at the future. Which is a, well, lo which is a lovely message to send. Yes. Well, this was a short podcast. Okay, so goodbye. <laughs> I practically... I practically spelled out what the, this episode is supposed to be all about, thematically speaking, so there is, a, there is no need to talk about it anymore. Yes, there's really <laughs> no point at all. It's, well, actually, there is a point. I mean, okay, so thematically speaking, this episode is sound, but is the episode itself actually, well, well executed? Well, for the most part, I'd say yes. It I'll... seems as though to me personally that... Uh, since I already figured out what this episode was going to be about in before the uh, credits, I, I thought about, wait, this seems like the kind of story that could be easily handled with a 10 minutes running time. So what, are they going to pad it out? And they did. They kind of did with two songs. Yes, two, <laughs> well, one song that... Uh, where they did a reprise of that same song. A, a reprise that was uh, with, with different lyrics, though, because... The... Well, it didn't last long. It was like, yes, it, no, it was like 30, 40 seconds. Yes, and, there, and, there, and then there was that whole... Uh, uh, <laughs> Twilight Sprints clattering the main hallway of the castle with all the... With all those silly memorabilia. Yes. And, paraf and paraphernalia. Oh, goodness and gracious. Which, go which goes on uh, for a for a bit and it's kind of funny but thematically speaking it seems like its own episode rather than, rather than being part of the whole of the funeral episode yes, as I explained funny right you say, now funny you say it feels like it was for its own episode sort of deal because I couldn't help but wonder with you know how they how you know they were all like decorating this new castle and such and uh, they were Basically, bringing things they would like. I yes, because I, I yes, they did. I couldn't help but feel like, didn't we cover a lesson about that at some point? Well, actually, you know, one thing that I already enjoy about this new season is that technically there are no longer any lessons to be learned from them. In fact, they don't even bother to spell to spell it out to the audience. Yes, I know, but I'm just saying... We do, we're just dealing with a mundane uh, event, you know, slice of life, in which uh, uh, they, they are taken... For, they are, like, uh, enraptured by the moment in which they think, oh, we, we got to cheer Twilight up. Okay, uh, what? and they forget to think of, and they forget to put themselves into some other shoes and they think what would i do to make this uh, more homely yeah that's oh, the... oh, since oh, since twilight is the element of magic and we wouldn't be friends without her maybe we should you know give her a part of ourselves and and, and they end, and they end up basically clattering the entire hallway with 
with, with the, the junk. <laughs> and Pinkie Pie with the hidden, the hidden cannons. <laughs> hidden cannons of uh, surprise. Of gl- hidden glitter cannons, <laughs> hidden party cannons, booby trapping the entire castle, which was which was kind of funny. Yes, <laughs> that was amusingly silly. And uh, even Fluttershy brought the animals over. <laughs> what? Okay, already when they were singing the first song, the so- I mean, when they were singing the song the first time, the- for the longer haul, uh, already I was seeing. wait, are you actually literally bringing a bear into the castle, Fluttershy? <laughs> but what are you doing, you guys? And by the end of it, predictably, it was a clattered mess. Yes, okay, the only I, good thing about that whole thing was the portrait. I really love that portrait. Yes, and, they, and, it, and it's actually the first thing that goes away when they try to unclutter the room. Yes, <laughs> thanks a lot, Rainbow Dash. This is why yeah, you're the least favorite pony of mine. <laughs> yeah, the, yes, you, yes, you're, yes, Rainbow Dash is worse pony. No, she's not. Well, also, Rarity is worse pony. But also Applejack is worse pony. Everybody's worse pony. Everybody's worse pony. Everybody's worse pony. Everybody's worse pony. Nobody's better or or less or less good than anyone else. Yes. Uh, equality Every- for all. Equality of minuses for all. <laughs> now, actually, Rainbow Dash, uh, along with Pinkie Pie, is one of my favorites. So yeah, we're we are quite. I know. I know your favorite is Fluttershy because you had that fetish. Not fe- <laughs> not about- fe- not fetish. I would call it more the. Interest because yeah, I just like characters who are shy. That's all. Pot- potato, potato, tomato, tomato, Fluttershy, <laughs> anime girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yes. Okay, but- so okay, so there is, there is this li- there is this uh, lyric, there's this uh, this phrase somewhere in the song in which uh, Fluttershy uh, uh, talks about the joy of hugging a bear. <laughs> and and and, to, and I find myself shaking my head slowly and saying, "Lather shy, honey. Uh, you do know, you do know there is a wrestling move called the bear hug. There, <laughs> there is a reason for that. Yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that was funny. Yeah, but like I was about to say though, I uh, the reason I got the feeling that they went over something before is because I could have sworn they had a lesson where they learned that they shouldn't be thinking of themselves, but more of the friends, what their friends would like for well, something. Well, it's it's all about the context, really. It's difficult to... Uh, in, 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 even in real life, it's difficult to um, remember what you learn about yourself or the others when the context is different from which you uh, learned a lesson to begin with. In fact, the, the context is this context is quite different because, well, I know like I said, I know we're dealing with a different lesson, but uh, I mean, there was like a lesson within the lesson, so to speak. Lessonception. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we're not going to drop that joke, are we? It's kind of clear that we so, the, that they intended to pad the, the length of this episode out because uh, when you get down when you get down the main theme of this episode is. Grieving, grievance and acceptance, and therefore change can occur. Yes, and, and so that part seems a bit forced to pad the episode out because otherwise it would have been ten minutes long. But uh, I've seen worse applications of blatant uh, padding out uh, central conflicts to make an episode longer than it needed to be. And I'd say I said before this was this episode was ended with class. I meant it. Yes, uh, they, I, w- I, th- I think they, they they found a a seamless organic way to implement this uh, central conflict, so to speak, which wasn't really the, the the original conflict of the episode. But they managed, but by doing that, they managed to make an episode to make it an episode about everyone and not just Twilight herself, because change is something that everyone has to deal with in their own way. So we have Twilight Sparkle. Who just moved uh, just <laughs> to a, a new, new place, place. in which uh, in which with daunting and empty always then and they I like how they emphasize the fact that those always are empty 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 empty, empty, empty. empty. the echo and Pinkie Pie say I didn't know you could echo what was shouting <laughs> shouting <laughs> yes <laughs> it's also nice but so 
I really felt for Flut- for uh, Fluttershy, for Fluttershy, for Pinkie Pie. I felt for Twilight Sparkle. I meant to say, but <laughs> yes, I think I think everyone will, especially if the yes. sympathizing with her for the whole changes that yes, will happen changes, in one's life. Yes, changes are scary, but they happen. They are part of life, and you need to learn to deal with them. And uh, there were several episodes, I think, that subtly hinted about dealing with changes in, throughout the entirety of season four, which was the season about the change, mm-hmm. so to speak. Now, season five happens to be the, 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 the season of the aftermath of the change itself. Therefore, it makes sense to have a quote-unquote funeral episode to celebrate and or mourn about what was lost, but also what was gained. And uh, Twilight Sparkle needed to um, get into the zone, so to speak, get, in, get into the uh, face in which she she got past her previous memories. Well, yeah, she well, got a also, face in the pancakes. Yes, she got a face in the pancake, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that um, and uh, the, like Jesus appearing, like Jesus' face is appearing in pancakes. Now we have Twilight's face, and she's Bonnie Jesus. Oh God! Speaking. You can imagine she, people finding that now in their pancake. Oh my God! It's Twilight Sparkle in my pancakes. Suddenly newspapers, and and then they sell it on eBay for like thousands of dollars. Every, everybody join the new religion of equality, in which nobody is less or more important than anyone else. Oh gosh. <laughs> Okay, so I had a point before that, but you, I, I got distracted. So I was saying, uh, before... Oh, uh, I'm eating all my words like pancakes, so to speak. Yeah, it's as long Spark- as I don't have the spoon in it. Twilight Sparkle couldn't handle the change because, let's face it, the castle was a bit too much. It's especially, daunting. Especially... Especially with the, especially considering the context in which it appeared in the first place. Literally out of nowhere. <laughs> Just ooh, just ooh, so, so they, ooh, well, not, not only that, but, her, but not only that, her library was destroyed. So that meant she, yes. there was no. That mean there was no point of no return. There was no point of no return. <laughs> maybe maybe you to say there was a point of no return, or maybe yes, there was no perhaps. point of return. <laughs> yes, there was a point of no return. I know the, you want to. I, I I know you want to sing it, Davar. So <laughs> get your <up>, system. <laughs> This is the point of no return. Great. <laughs> anyway, okay, so, uh, so, so like I okay, said, so like you, I said, can, the lo- yeah. So sh- there was no way for her to go back and recapture that. So she had to deal with the whole yes change magnitude was, of the yeah. change of the castle. Yes, change was forced upon her, and uh, she there's nothing she can do about it. She has to learn to live with it, but. That doesn't mean she cannot celebrate the memories that she created with uh, with the now destroyed Golden Hawk Library. Eventually, her friends figured it out too. So they they did the best thing they could do. They recovered the stump that was left of the library. Still, it still boggles the mind to think that it was a tree with books inside of it. Yes, it is, it is bog- mind boggling that. But and also, it was and also it was bigger on the inside, like a TARDIS. Also, 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 also. Did you? I hope you didn't get the same thing I did of them, uh, you know, exhuming a corpse, so to speak, of the memory. Well, yes. <laughs> now, now, now you're making me think of, of an, uh, the tree has been embalmed to be preserved, <laughs> like a like a dead animal. Oh gosh. But they, no, actually, they they retrieved they retrieved the stump. And they put they uh, refashion it as a chandelier in the main hall, which and, is beautiful, by the way. Which was beautiful, and they attached uh, beautiful gems that, for some reason, they contained f- picture frames of the best memories they they had, all of them as friends, both in the library and around it. One has to so, wonder how did they get a hold of those memories, and who? I mean, they don't have cameras, do they? And well, who yeah, took no, the well, photos? They, they, do, they do have cameras. Well, then who took the photos? Then? I don't know. Well, photo finish? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, the ge- maybe they are magic gems that can actually absorb memories from ponies and turn them into picture frames to appear on said gems. But you think that would have been explained at some point? Yes, you would think it would have been explained. 
the reason the reason I was a bit weirded out by it is because it just happened to be it if it, if it, there was memories that were taken from them the that it should have been from their perspective instead it's like the episode the audience's perspective of the scenes that's where the theme of the episode uh, which was already clear became downright blatant but it doesn't really matter because that scene was a really really good scene oh yeah really, beautiful scene a really beautiful heartwarming scene and they they brought twilight into the hall and 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 they told her what does she think about it and twilight look at them with teary eyes. Teary eyes, and she basically says it's perfect, and they hug. Ah. I know. Goodness. I mean, I mean, despite the fact when I'm nitpicking, it's like that was beautiful. I mean, you can. I mean, see, people, you can nitpick if you want. It's, it's just you have to appreciate what goes into those scenes, the emotions that go through. Especially oh, you see, that well, uh, that one scene with Twilight and Spike where they went to see their old place. Oh, that was beautiful. That I was... know, that's, I couldn't help but think it was like they went back to see an old friend sort of thing that they dearly miss and it was like... Yes, it's, the, it's, like, visiting, it's like visiting a graveyard. Again, funeral episode. Mm. So that's, those, those, those points still, like really touched me <laughs> despite all good. the uh, decoy and hilarity that ensued before well, I then. like to I like to think that the comedy in this in this episode was surprisingly balanced it wasn't mm. too zany or wacky because it was re it was really respectful of the context in which this episode was happening yeah and it, unless uh, we want it, it, what about spike's massage then <laughs> Well, I'll, well I'll <laughs> that, but you know seeing book biceps of all people doing working at working at Aloe and Lotus uh, Spa was, uh, was, <laughs> was quite, quite a funny. daunting experience. It was quite funny. I, I like the fact that he grabs Spike with, with, his, sheer, with his pectoral muscles and then, come on, are you ready, little dragon? Yeah! I'll give you a manly message, no homo. The, the creators <laughs> really were mean to Spike at that moment. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was funny though. It, it was funny, funny. Yeah, but it also, was mean. Also, uh, Aloe, or maybe she was Lotus, uh, had, had some speaking lines. Yeah, for once. Her voice was not too good. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, because she's a side character, I didn't judge it too harshly. Uh, I mean, I, mean but it, I, I know somebody who will judge her harshly because, you know, you know how fans are. Oh yeah, we know about the fans. That's okay. That, we that know they have perfectly good judgment. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why Byron Scratch, aka DJ, DJ Pomfrey, will never have a voice of her own. Yeah. And everybody is, per is perfectly fine with that because if she doesn't sound exactly like freaking no whacking, <laughs> I think it'll be a, it'll be a riot. It'll be the pony apocalypse. The, yes, the, I can. I can pony, it will be the pony the pony apocalypse. Yeah, the pony apocalypse. Ima imagine them sitting in their chairs watching the episode. Vile scratches first line. Hey, right, she's not the same voice. <laughs> I was imagining. I'm going to complain. <laughs> uh, I am living this fandom forever. <laughs> You're um, just throwing the throwing all the pony memorabilia in the air, and they're and, going to the bronies. They're uh, they're going to. <laughs> They're going to throw their glass of refined wine to the wall and <laughs> wear their fedora hats and trim their trim their neck beards. And they're going to home oh, this home. Oh, this is so uncouth. I'm going to now. I'm going to hug my rarity pillow first. Now, okay, we're we're generalizing and stereotyping. Yes, well, we're for the just sake we're just making offense. fun of the stereotypes. Yes, it, no, no, those of are stereotypes. Of the worst but, kinds. Yes, but. Those are stereotypes for a reason. I would like to remind you, mind you, you know. Yes. Yes. But anyway, but anyway, enough with making fun of bronies. That's so not our style. We are so much more classy. Well, so... we're comedians. Comedians always make fun of everybody, whoa, even themselves. Whoa, whoa Devar, comedian <laughs> is a big, big word. <laughs> I wouldn't throw it out there so easily. <laughs> Go comedian. I'm not, I said like comedians, not like. exactly. <laughs> Well, like, already, still, it's quite a huge um, deal. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so things that we did not like about this episode, since we are nitpicking. Uh, let me think now, because I'm trying to remember, because everything was 
you know, seem to go on the board, except for my reservation that I thought they learned the lesson already. And now we already established, but uh, uh, and Rarity, yeah. you know, using Spike, you know, with fluttery eyelashes. Yeah, and that everything. was that was the I didn't I, that was the my least favorite part of this episode. I hope it doesn't become a trend in this season again. Yes, I'd rather they not string this along too much because it just you know you know what i'd love for them to finally kill this quote-unquote joke and just say and just have rarity say to spike spike spikey wikey this is exact voice i'm sorry i ever led you but this is not meant to be you're just too young for me and spike is like oh heartbroken but then he's going to be all right i mean he's yeah he's young he's that's a crash, and that's all the point. That's the point with crashes. They are not meant to last. At some point, the little baby dragon will have to grow and accept the fact that a crash is just a crash. Mm. He will grow up to be a better individual because of that. I get the faint, strange feeling, though. They, if they were to, if they were to do that episode, it it probably wouldn't happen because I don't think the writers would want to. Oh yes, there. Okay, there is the whole. Uh, the, uh, yeah, because they're fans the ship rarity with Spike. How could I ever forget that? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I don't. I, I couldn't care less. <laughs> yes, I know. Uh, it, I'm. I'm just. I'm just saying. It's a bit of a. It's big. A bigger risk, really, isn't it? Okay, but okay. But at the very least, stop having this kind of scenes. Stop yes, having it's a bit. The... It don't add anything, and it's a bit. Uh, it gets a bit much. I'm pretty sure Spike would have already brought Twilight to the spa without the uh, Rarity's flattering eye motion. <laughs> yes. Uh, by the way, trademark. Uh, Rarity's flattering eye motion. Trademark Maddog Day Master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is... And pancakes. And pancakes. Hashtag Twilight's pancake. <laughs> <laughs> confirmed. Half-Life 3 confirmed, by the way. Can I have twice pancakes? <laughs> Twi punk, twi cakes, <laughs> twi cakes. Oh man. Okay. Uh, What's well, anything talk, else let's we talk disliked? About, uh, let's talk about details. Um, you you have to really like the way that you know, at the beginning of the episode in which Father Shy tries, in the most gentle and uh, non provocative way, to send Twilight away from her home. Yeah. Just wouldn't want to leave, and maybe you should go away. But I'm not just going to force you and be rude about it. But please, please go away. Yes. And Even... go bother Pinkie Pie. Yes. Yes. Go. Go. Oh, to, uh... Go. Why you go? Yeah. Go see Pinkie. <laughs> and I like. And the, they and make like... pancakes all night. Yes. And I like the idea that uh, it's what Twilight Sparkle. Prefer losing to Rainbow Dash fifty times in a row, or whatever, however times they took to raise her. That de those... that definitely said a lot about how much she didn't want to deal with that aspect of her life. Yes, uh, she but tried also... to fill the void yes. with her friends. Yes, yes, absolutely. But I also liked the fact that once uh, her friends confront her about the, the issue, she doesn't dance around it and just. Get, gets it out of her system because at this point in time she trusts her friends completely and they're feeling immutual so it makes no sense to have secrets from one another yeah the, pro the problem with that is that that after that is resolved we had uh, well 15 minutes left of the episode so we need to feel it some somehow yeah, and still so 10 minutes with, with decorating and so, and so main hole cluttering fun <laughs> oh, but yes, this was a great episode. Yeah, it was a, again, a very again. heartwarming episode about uh, it was, change. It was a not really no, yeah, no. It wasn't about change so much as it was about the ex, the, the acceptance of, the of past change. And change. The, the accept of the acceptance of change after the grief that change caused in the first place. So, like I said, perfect funeral episode, subtle in that department also. Mm -hmm. The fact, well, as in it wasn't literally about a funeral, so that was the subtle part, <laughs> I mean, I mean. Yeah. But it was definitely like a funeral, or at least like a, uh, like mourning. It was mourning, it was an episode about mourning and 
and then cheering up finally once the rest of your life is once again in front of you and you have the memories of your past still with you but they are not impeding you to proceed in your own path in life like i said our like the song says the past does not define us and we can the song, the, the sunset shimmer song that is from mm-hmm. the from the music video that was released recently mm-hmm. uh, which which was pretty good by the way but and uh, the memories of the past are are there for us to to remind us, to remind us of where we come from, and how we got to where we are and how, today, and how exactly, and, and and how we got to where we are today, it's 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 there. It's part of us now. Yes, it's a but, it's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life, but but that doesn't mean that life has ended. It just means a new chapters has been opened, and now we can make new memories with the same friends and see what life will bring us. So season five is the season after the change. And it feels completely already. Three episodes in, it feels completely different from any other season so far. The way it began, the way it's handled. been handled so far. Very classy, too. Also, the fact that now there is more than one writer per each episode, which is something new. Hmm. Which is something new. If you notice, uh, the first episode, the first two episodes were written by two people, and one of them was M.A. Larson, and the original story concept was by Megan McCarthy. And uh, this episode also was written by two individuals. So I believe this is going to be a, a new trend for this season multiple writers handling one episode. And so far, uh, the, the end result was really structurally sound, well written, solid episodes that deal with uh, mature issues and they deal and they deal with them with class mhm but uh it's to say it's to it's too say too early that <laughs> I meant to, to say it's too early. It's too. Uh, I meant to say. I. It's, I believe you meant to say it's, it's too, too early to say that. Yes, it's too. It's too say too early that, <laughs> because this is just episode three. Yes, and uh, we'll see what happens next. I honestly, I, I honestly don't know what's going to up, come up next because I purposely left myself ignorant in order to be. Uh, to enjoy more the surprise, in order to enjoy more, at the full extent of enjoyment, what kind of episode I can see next time. So I don't know. Yes, I have no idea either. I can theorize all I want. I mean, I've already said the possibilities in my uh, MLP cast that I did before this one. Okay, so... um, So let's see what, what this season will bring to us. And don't spoil it to us if you know what to expect from the Next episode, we want to discover it for our own. That's what, what that's, I was trying to convey yeah, in, that's my, what... ma- in my madman's rambling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've, I would rather go into it blind as well, each episode. So, um, before we cut off this podcast altogether, uh, yeah. you told me, you told me off air, you had some concerns about what could possibly become of this season, judging from something you saw on this episode? Uh... Actually, no, it wasn't. I don't. I think I, I thought it was the reservation things I've all, I've said to you about, uh, you know, the fact that uh, which was unfounded, as in the, you know, the fact I thought they learned a lesson already about one thing and blah blah. Oh, so you. Oh, oh, so you are afraid they are going to. Uh, re- they are going to uh, completely have, forget to, the. We're that, going to have multiple episodes in which they relearn the same the same lesson over and over. <laughs> Well, well, I hope I, I hope that's not the case because this the the way this season established itself, it seems to be that they are the ones who are going to teach friendship lessons to other ponies, which is the right way to go. Mm. And uh, and again, uh, this one episode wasn't about them learning a lesson in well, not cluttering somebody's house, house with, with, their own, with their own with their own junk, <laughs> but uh, mm. but about the change. And the acceptance of the change and blah 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 yes. blah. I said it a million times already. I'm starting to sound repetitious. Yes, a broken so, record. <laughs> I'm broken. 
Yes, I'm I'm, I'm broken like the broken drum. <laughs> mm. Discord reference there, you guys. Yes. Speaking of class. Yes. Right. I believe. Yes, you. I believe you already had your counterwise wine there, Mount Hog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the bar! don't spoil the joke. I mean, uh, the, the let's play of the Discworld game we are doing right now won't be out un up until next year at this rate. Yes, I know. <laughs> the, don't, don't spoil the joke already, dang it. Oh, don't worry, the, the, the fact you took the Catwise wine means that the joke will come back to the past uh, as no! in the time we've... Don't the You're joke. the joke. You're the gag. I'm going to. St I'm going to figure out people strangle you. <laughs> and, I, and then I'm going to immortalize the memory of your strangled face inside a gem that I shall hang into my magic uh, tree stump chandelier, which apparently can have a <laughs> can have a needle and a string go through the crystal. <laughs> Yes, what's up with that? <laughs> well, then, a a anyway, question that know, was uh, never asked. <laughs> actually, okay, there is one more thing I'm a bit disappointed about this episode, but it's about as minor a complaint as you can get. Why? Which is, um, well, Rarity redecorated the dinner room, right? Yeah. And we are told that the others have basically took one room of the castle each and decorated the, it to uh, their uh, taste. I wish I could have seen that. I yes. wish I could have seen those uh, modified rooms. They're probably going to be shown, I hope, in Later. future episodes, but I wish they could have been shown in this one, no, to drive the point home. The fact that, yes, so, memories, it's all about, it's all about the memories, right? And when yeah. we have each room of the castle uh, personalized to the taste of the main six, it really emphasizes the fact that this house, this castle, it's not just Twilight's, it's a, it's there everyone's. Place. It's their it's their place. It's their it's their hanging out place, so to speak. It's the <laughs> oh, other than Seriously, their why don't they just move in <laughs> at the well, rate they were going? Well well, <laughs> well well for practical reasons. I mean Applejack yeah. has to has to work at the orchard, so she has to live in their house. I uh, know Rick, that was joking. And, uh, <laughs> Rarity has her work in the boutique. Uh, Father Shy, you saw what happens when she brings her own animals into the castle, especially yeah. the bear, so you don't want that. And Pinkie Pie has to work for the cakes. Uh, I believe she still likes baking. <laughs> so I don't think the castle has ovens yet. And I don't think the, ha the castle could handle all the personalities in one place. And Rainbow Dash... Well, you she know, crashes. You know, you know what? Actually, she could just bring her own cloud home ab ab above the castle, but that would make things awkward whenever she has to use the bathroom. Oh, gosh. No one <laughs> questions that either. No, actually, somebody has. And, and, all, and all because Lauren Faust made a comment some time ago about ponies using toilets. Uh, uh, Lauren well, Faust, the original troll. So Yes. Okay, I think we're okay on that. We're going high, to on that high and mighty classy note, we shall conclude this family friendly podcast, I should emphasize. Yes, incredibly incredibly family friendly. Well, at least we didn't talk about rape. So anyway. I think that was a bit much. <laughs> Edit that out, it was a bit much. <laughs> oh man. I don't, I don't know why I said that. I was thinking of... Oh, I know. Oh, wait. I know exactly why I said that. Uh, Game of Thrones is going to start soon up, guys. No! Let's, tur let's, let's turn into this is the Game of, Game of Thrones podcast in which... Okay, so what... Okay, so did you guys notice yet that uh, Daenerys Stormborn own arc in the Middle East or whatever the land she is right now is basically an allegory for the American government and the mess it did on the Middle East, on the actual, as in the actual Middle East. Have you noticed that already? And you should have by now. It's kind of obvious, you guys. Where, where is your head? What are you thinking other than Daenerys' breasts and the fact that last season that what should have been shot as a consensual sex scene turned out to be rape? And did you, uh, did you notice that one character foreshadows two deaths that never happened? <laughs> Wait, you mean to tell me you're watching Game of Thrones? No, I, I know, I, I know of it. <laughs> and also, there's an and also there's an Easter egg where basically someone who speaks a different language, uh, when it's translated, it's actually the Holy Grail uh, 
uh, line by J John Cleese when he goes, I fought in your general direction. Are you sure you're not watching the show? Uh, nope. Okay. Anyway, this, <laughs> anyway, this, this has been the this has been the family fr the family friendly games of ponies podcast. And remember, you guys, you kids, and your family kids and family guys. Uh, <laughs> I believe I said family guys. Uh, this is a game of ponies. In a game of ponies, you either win or you win. There is no losing in a game of ponies. Everybody's happy. Everybody's yes. equal. Yes. Everybody's the same. And nobody's more important than the other. All hail equalism. Yes. All and, hail and the not communism. And the, throne, and the throne is made of ponies. <laughs> Oh, oh dear lord, no, that is horrible. <laughs> that is awful. <laughs> that is friendly. Da, 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 da. Good night, everybody. Good night and take care. See you next week. See you next pony time, next pony channel. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me. They released in Blu-ray the the the, new, the the classic Batman TV serial. Mm, I so want that, but it's fairly expensive. Yes, it is expensive. I need to stop the recording now because we're talking about Batman now. <laughs> <laughs> Adam West Batman, no less. There are some there are just some days you can't get rid of an Adam West bomb. <laughs> Ponies, ponies, Batman. <laughs> <laughs>